Raider Nation, what's going on? This is the Raiders Report. Let's get into some Raiders news. The Raiders signed Brandon Parker. This, this guy was drafted 65th overall by the Raiders in last month's draft. He played four seasons at North Carolina AT&T, starting all 48 games of his career at left tackle. He was a three-time FCS All-American at left tackle from 2015 to 2017. He was named the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference Offensive Lineman of the Year for three straight years. It was a busy day for the Raiders on Monday as the team made two of their nine draft picks to their rookie contracts. The day started with the team signing Nick Nelson, a standout cornerback from Wisconsin, who was expected to challenge for immediate playing time in, one, in year one. By signing Nelson and Parker, the Raiders now only need to sign third round draft pick Arden Key. The team really likes Key and has taken to being a Raider, so it's only a matter of time before this deal gets done. Next news bit I got for you guys, Derek Carr. He's upset about the NFL top 100 ranking of him, and, well, I don't really blame him. So Carr, as you can see there, was ranked number 60 this year, which is a huge fall from his ranking of 11 last year. Carr voiced his displeasure on Twitter. This is exactly what he had to say. Not what we wanted, but always thankful when the people you play against put their name on the list, so thank you. Can't wait for this year. After a terrific 2016 campaign, which saw him lead the Raiders to a 12-3 record and creep into a possible MVP contention, Carr took a major step back in 2017. His stats across the board, 3,496 yards, 22 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. Carr will now be hoping that John Gruden's guidance can help him and the Raiders get back on track this season. Gruden is renowned for his work with quarterbacks and will likely work closely with Carr to bring out the very best out of him. If Gruden proves to be successful, chances are Carr will end up being a lot better than 60th best player in the league this year. Next news one I got for you, Billy Cannon. This guy passed away. Moment of silence for him. This guy is definitely going to be missed here. There's no doubt about that. The former LSU Tiger and Raider passed away at age 80. He spent six seasons with the Raiders from 1964 to 1969. During his tenure with the team, Cannon totaled 338 rushing yards, three rushing touchdowns, but also 2,268 receiving yards and 25 receiving touchdowns. He was also named Pro Bowler and First Team All-Pro during his six seasons with the Raiders. Cannon had quite the career with the Raiders, but his talent was recognized far before he reached the NFL stage. As mentioned previously, Cannon went to LSU and played on the football team for three years where he served as the team's running back. He registered 1,867 yards, 19 rushing touchdowns, plus 522 rushing receiving yards and two receiving touchdowns. But most notably, Cannon took home the Heisman Trophy in 1959. Cannon was the first of six Raiders to be dubbed a Heisman Trophy winner. So let's take a look at some of those prestigious winners who have wore a Raiders jersey. First guy there, Jim Plunkett. Then you got Marcus Allen, Bo Jackson, maybe the most famous guy, Tim Brown, Desmond Howard. And then we'll look at the last four. It's Andre Ware, Charles Woodson, Rasheem Solom, and then Matt Leinert, even though he wasn't a Raider for all that long. Guys, those are my news and rumors. Now we're going to hop into, well, those are my news. Now we'll hop into some rumors. But before I do, I just want to say thank you to our sponsor, Miz and Main. And remember to follow me on Twitter at MitchellRens365. We talk a lot of rumors on this show, so you're going to need to understand my Raiders rumor scale. Zero Chucky heads, tuck rule, tuck that, not going to happen. One Chucky head, small shred of truth, 25% chance. Two Chuckies, people are talking, 50-50 coin flip. Threes, pretty likely. Four Chucky heads. Believe it, baby, 100% going to happen. Now, let's get into some of those rumors. The first one, Jordy Nelson has nothing to prove. I'm giving this one zero Chucky heads. Tuck rule, tuck that. Get out of here, Jordy. This week, Jordy Nelson was back in Wisconsin for a charity golf event in Lake Geneva. Nelson talked about his move from the Packers, where he spent his previous nine seasons now in Oakland. The Nelson family is spending one of the final weeks in Wisconsin before moving out west. Nelson had this to say, I don't have anything to prove. I'm enjoying the game. As long as I'm healthy and enjoying it, it will be good. Nelson certainly has nothing left to prove in Green Bay, as Nelson racked up 7,848 yards and 69 touchdowns. However, you're not in Green Bay anymore, Dorothy. You 100% have something to prove to Raider Nation. You signed a two-year, $15 million contract and will be 33 next month. You better show up and play this year. Next rumor I got coming up on the board, John Gruden will fix Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper didn't have the year we were hoping. I'm giving this one two Chucky heads. People are talking. So Raiders legend wide receiver Tim Brown is confident Gruden will fix Cooper. Raider Nation wants to see Oakland Raider wide receiver Amari Cooper find his Pro Bowl caliber from the eluded third season. 
In each of Cooper's first two seasons, he eclipsed 70 receptions for 1,000 yards, yet he only had 48 catches for 680 yards last year. Without a game in the books, some maybe labeled John Gruden as Amari Cooper whisper. One of Gruden's former Hall of Fame wide receivers, Tim Brown, seems to be on the same wavelength. Brown believes surrounding Gruden can be the best out of Cooper, and he said in an interview on Monday, look, John Gruden will get that fixed. This is a guy that knows all the tricks of the trade. He's been with all the great wide receivers in this league. I don't think this is going to be an issue at all. Amari is going to put up incredible position to catch 100 balls this year in an offense that I think is going to get it done. Brown also went on to say, if he can't, nobody can. Meaning if John Gruden can't fix Amari, nobody can. So guys, I want to know from you. I got a reaction pull up there. Will Amari Cooper have 100 catches in 2018? If you think it's a yes, give me a heart. If you think it's a no, throw up that like. Let's get into that next rumor then. Pharaoh Brown, he paid a, a Southwest passenger $100 for Chucky Heads. Believe it, baby. This is a pretty awesome story. Probably the best story that I'll have on here today, just from a heartwarming aspect. So now and then we all have a moment and at least temporary renews our faith, maybe in humanity. Raiders, uh, Pharaoh Brown had such a moment this past weekend, and he was touched by it, and he felt compelled to share. First, it was just a generic message from Brown on Twitter. There are still people in the world who are unselfish and considerate human beings. Then he got more specific about exactly what inspired him to make the tweet. So this is what he said. I was late for my Southwest flight and was the last to board. Got a middle seat and a lady two rows back came and asked me to switch with her. So I gave her $100 <laughs> to show how much of a nice gesture it was. Tweeted out, hashtag spread the love. It didn't end there, however. The woman who made the gesture to switch seats, so the 6'5", 246-pound tight end was, wasn't crammed in the middle seat, was also touched by the exchange and wrote a note thanks to Brown for the $100 in appreciation. The note touched Brown all over again. This is exactly what the note read. Dear tall man, I was raised to believe that as good people means to do good things without expecting anything in return. And while I didn't expect anything from you, I still accepted something. I recently found out the school I work for can't afford to rehire me next year, meaning I'm not really in place to turn down charity and do what I would consider to be the right thing. I tell you this to assume my own guilt and to thank you. You are a good person, and I hope life rewards you accordingly. So, Raider Nation, I think this is important to spread the love. Maybe tag a family member, tag a friend in the comments below, and just let them know that you appreciate them. Or people on YouTube, if you want to hit me up, maybe I actually did something good on this show. Let's get into the next Raiders rumor I got for you guys. Raiders, they're going to start three rookies. Well, you're going to have to wait. Find out after word from our sponsor, Miz in Maine. Raiders will start three rookies, three Chucky heads, pretty likely. The Raiders are looking to bounce back and need their rookies to stand up. Not every rookie of the team draft will be an impact player from day one, but several will have to be. Here are three rookies who I think will likely find themselves being starters in this upcoming season. Let's get into the obvious one out of the way first. The team's first round pick, Colt Miller, will start from day one. When the Raiders found his highest level of success in recent years, the 2016 offensive line was the strength of the team. The poor play of the line last season was a big reason for the team's regression, which is why I think a guy like Miller is going to step up huge for them. Next guy, the future of Maurice Hurst is set to be a unique one. Hurst was the thought to be a sure first round draft pick, but fell to the fifth round due to a heart condition that caused him to be sent home from the NFL Combine. This is where things get complicated. As a clear first round talent at the position and need for the team, Hurst will clearly be a, D, a day one starter if he's able to play. Next guy, cornerback. So this one has quickly become a position of need for the Oakland Raiders. As of now, they essentially have no starters penciled in. Last year, first round pick Garyon Conley will likely be the team's number one corner, but the second and third cornerback spots are still open for grabs. The team has brought in a lot of players to compete for these spots, but most of which are only talented enough to be depth players. In all likelihood, one of these spots will go to newly signed free agent Colts Rashawn Melvin. We could see Conley and Melvin be the two outside cornerbacks of the team with several players battling for the starting nickel corner position. The player with the best chance of winning this competition and also a rookie, fourth round pick, Nick Nelson out of Wisconsin. But now let's get into rumor number five, Doug Martin. Is he the backup running back to Marshawn Lynch? This has been a rumor that we've been talking about a lot on this show. I'm giving this one two Chucky heads. People are talking. 
Oakland Raiders added Doug Martin, who was 29 this offseason, to the running back mix to join DeAndre Washington and Jalen Richard after six seasons with the Buccaneers. Last season, Martin appeared in 11 games for the Buccaneers, making eight starts and posting 406 yards on 138 attempts while adding nine catches for 84 yards. Last week on the Raiders Report, I discussed the chances the Raiders release either DeAndre Washington or Jalen Richard. The Athletics' Victor Ford revealed last week he didn't think both Richard and Washington would make the roster. Why? Because he said DeAndre Washington and Jalen Richard are both have similar size and similar skill set. So maybe they're not going to keep one of them. It may appear that Martin is easily the backup to running back Marshall Lynch, but am I the only one who thinks Martin is the worst running back out of the group? I mean, like... I don't know. I personally, I think that he is not as good as a guy like Jalen Richard or DeAndre Washington. But guys, I mean, I want to bring up a little, I guess, listicle here to show you just like their stats from last year. It's not pretty. I mean, as you can see there, Doug Martin, 406 yards, three touchdowns. He averaged only 2.9 yards per carry. Jalen Richard, 3.5 yards per carry. Not pretty either. And then you got a guy like DeAndre Washington, who I was really high on coming out of Texas Tech. Again, only 2.7 yards per carry. I think what the Raiders need to do is say, okay, which one of these guys can best fit with a guy like Marshawn Lynch? For me, I think it's a toss-up between DeAndre Washington and Jalen Richard. For me, I've seen Doug Martin. He's failed me in the past. I'm kind of done with him. But I want to know from you guys, who do you think should be the backup to Marshawn Lynch? Now, let's get into that last rumor up on the board. Donald Penn, he is staying in Oakland. I'm going to give this one three chalky heads pretty likely. So again, this is a guy who's been a pretty frequent name here on the Raiders report. So why am I so confident that Penn is staying? Well, first off, I'm only 75% sure, but for starters, Donald Penn signed an expensive two-year extension before the 2017 season. And John Gruden recently told reporters, in quotes, Donald Penn is still on our football team and is rehabbing his foot injury. Colt Miller may be the future, but I still believe Penn is going to be part of this present roster. Penn seems motivated and should be considering the Raiders drafted two talented guys in the 2018 NFL Draft. On Monday, Penn sent a message to his fans on Twitter that he's ready to get going and reverse the bad spirits that torpedoed the Raiders in 2017. He said this, I've been working my butt off and just can't wait to show this comeback. Hashtag Raider Nation. Raider Nation, thanks so much for tuning in to the Raiders Report. My name's Mitchell Renz. Please follow me on Twitter at MitchellRenz365 so I can get that nice little blue check mark.